Fujima's a freaking genius. character, an in-depth look at some of the greatest moments in gaming, and oh my god I love Snake Eater so much! You can say what you want about the hammy writing, the awkwardly sexually charged characters, and the majority of the Cobra unit, but Snake Eater is one of my favorite stories ever told in a game. There are just so many great moments and themes and characters that I could do a whole series of building characters on it. So. Why exactly am I talking about a ladder of all things? What? I could be talking about how the sorrow instills reflection on your actions and playstyle, all the while driving home the main narrative theme. I could talk about how Eva subverts the trope of a typical Bond seductress. I could talk about the game's ending... again. Instead, I'm discussing why a set of two vertically parallel poles connected by horizontally spaced rungs is one of the best storytelling moments in a series filled with amazing storytelling moments. Am I just being ironic for clickbait purposes, or is there an actual legitimate reason this moment is worth discussing? While it might seem like the former, it's definitely the latter. For those of you unfamiliar with Snake Eater, allow me to explain this scene. Roughly halfway through the game, you come across this tunnel with a ladder at the end. There are no enemies, there is nothing to hide from, nothing to fight, not even a way to die. It's just you, the ambient wind, and a ladder. Seeing no other way, you start to climb. And climb, and climb. There's over 300 rungs, estimated to be around 600 feet high, and it's nearly two minutes of you doing nothing but holding up on the controller. The fact that you aren't doing anything seems like it would make it one of the worst moments in a video- Wait, what? I died? I felt like, what, maybe two feet? Geez, Snake, you certainly didn't have a way to fall. Oh jeez, that was terrible, did I just say that? This entire moment could have easily been handled with a cutscene or a fadeaway, yet it was intentionally done to make the player climb this ridiculously long ladder. In any other game, this moment would have been entirely forgettable, or worse, be considered that one moment that absolutely kills the pace of the game. In fact, all you have to do is look how other games implemented their ladders and see just how easily this could have happened. Skies of Arcadia had its own long ladder, and almost criminally no one talks about that game. Dark Souls almost has a fetish for ladders, but even a particularly long one wouldn't garner much interest or discussion. Even Charlie's Angels had its own rather infamous ladder scene that would seem like an awkward homage to Snake Eater, except Snake Eater was released a full year later than this game. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other games that were able to do a lot more interesting things with their ladders. In Mega Man 2, Crash Man Stage takes place over multiple ascending ladders, making it more of an ordeal and trial to survive. David Crane's A Boy in His Blob used ladders to solve puzzles. Even games like Outland use their ladders to build anticipation and tension. Ladders are everywhere in games. Yet there have only been a few that many gamers can look back on with a sense of unironic appreciation. So out of everything that Metal Gear Solid 3 had managed to accomplish, why is the ladder one of the biggest defining moments of the game? In order to find out why this ladder is so important, further steps need to be taken. Okay, so let's bring up what most of you are probably thinking. It's gotta be the song. You aren't just left alone with the darkness and silence through the night. Partway into your ascent, an acapella version of the Snake Eater theme fades in. What a thrill With darkness and silence through the night The theme was written by Norihiko Hibano and performed by and Cynthia Harrell, who you might recognize from the Koji Igarashi Productions classic. Symphony of the Night's 
I am the wind. I am the wind. Snake Eater is thematically appropriate to the early James Bond movies that Metal Gear Solid 3 was obviously inspired by. The song is powerful lyrically, and it's damn catchy. But is that it? While the song makes a good contender for the reason, it would be wrong if we didn't climb higher to see if there was more waiting for us at the... Oh, shit. So is there some sort of narrative purpose to climbing the ladder? Could it possibly be a reference to one of the earliest games, Snakes and Ladders? where a ladder is used to symbolize an ascension into enlightenment, a shortcut to divinity. Perhaps this was meant to symbolize the turning point where Snake, who started off as just a man with a gun, who would eventually be known as the greatest soldier who ever lived. And it's no surprise he's called Snake in this game, since snakes and snakes and ladders represents a fall from divinity which we ultimately know that's what Big Boss becomes later in his series. Is all this just an incredibly deep narrative representation of a psychological struggle between man and monster? No, probably, probably not. More likely, the latter scene has more to do with pacing. Pacing is usually the distance and magnitude between certain story scenes, what we commonly know as narrative pacing. But video games are interactive mediums, and because of that there's a lot of different kinds of pacing involved. For example, most games usually start off approachable and easy in the beginning, and as the player learns the mechanics and gains new skills, the difficulty is meant to increase in proportion. This is what we call difficulty curve, but that in itself is a form of pacing. Another form of pacing is how often a player will get new weapons and unlock new skills, which is a reward pacing. Even the amount of time of when a guard enters your line of sight to when he's most likely to see you, and that threat of being seen is gone is just another form of pacing. If you look how Snake Eater is paced, everything starts to make a bit more sense. Metal Gear Solid 3 has very methodical pacing. The game starts off quietly, usually in an area with no enemies that you can cautiously explore. It then introduces you to an area where there are some hazards and a few guards, usually in a fairly linear path that leads you to the next area. Each area becomes more difficult than the last before accumulating into a boss fight or a big plot reveal. Then after that, everything goes quiet again. Once you consider where the ladder scene is placed, it provides a proper perspective. Before you start your ascension, you most likely finish one of the longest boss fights in the history of video games, the fight against the end. The end is almost an antithesis to a typical boss fight. In Metal Gear, these boss battles are often climactic set pieces, designed more like what you would expect in a retro style video game. The area you fight in is usually fairly small, and enemy attacks are telegraphed so that once you learn their patterns, you know how to beat them. The end, however, is more like a mirror match. It's a game of hide and go seek in three large maps, where you're both the hunter and the hunted. It requires you to play patiently, and be constantly aware of your surroundings. While it's not the most difficult fight, and in fact it's mercifully difficult to lose, the amount of focus required can keep that tension high for upwards of an hour. So when the latter scene comes immediately after that, the climb isn't just a matter of slowing the pace down, but instead it becomes a way to dissipate the tension. It's a form of narrative meditation, that calming exhale after holding a deep breath. It's not something that requires much thought or effort. It allows you to see how absurd the situation is and provides a sense of levity to what might have been a frustrating experience. The theme of Snake Eater in the background gives players something to focus on so they don't get distracted by their own, possibly stressful thoughts. The scene is so memorable because it does such a good job at relieving that tension. The latter becomes a reward after a long, tough fight. Not a tangible in-game reward, 
but a personal reward to the player. And maybe this is why other ladders aren't so memorable. That moment in Charlie's Angels is frustrating because, well, the game isn't that good. The ladder isn't relieving anything and in fact only adds to the frustration, mainly because it doesn't serve any other purpose other than padding. The ladders in Dark Souls, while certainly not terrible, are only designed as a way to connect the sections of the overall world together. While there are many of other games that have done some interesting things with ladders, none of them feel like a reward to the player. Many writers make the mistake of thinking it was about the high points, how you can get the most out of your action scenes or dramatic reveals. And while these moments are certainly memorable, all it took was one ladder to remind us that even the quiet moments can build character. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, please remember to like and subscribe, and feel free to check out any of my other videos. Soberdorf is a Patreon sponsored channel. If you wish to support the show and have your name appear among these awesome people that make the show possible, consider joining at patreon.com slash the Soberdorf. Until next time, this is Soberdorf reminding you that gaming experience builds character. I am still in a dream